Welcome to Schletter's tutorial for PV Groundbreaker, our free web-based application for PV estimation. Browsers that support the application are Google Chrome, Mozilla Foxfire, and Internet Explorer 9. You will also need to have JavaScript enabled. To access the PV Groundbreaker website, go to www.pvgroundbreaker.com. One of the first steps to using PV Groundbreaker is to create a user account. Though you can use the demo account feature to test the application, registration provides more functionality. To create a new account, click the Create New Account button. Then type in the necessary information about your company. You will also need to select your user account level. There are two types of registered account options, the standard and the advanced. The standard account allows the user to access all the different features and functionalities of the software, except for saving the project data. In order to save projects to your account, the advanced user account option is needed. Those that are registered as a standard user can upgrade to an advanced account at any time by logging into an existing account and upgrading. To upgrade your account, sign into the existing account and select the account button at the bottom of the tool palette. My account is an advanced user account, so the upgrade account button is unavailable. For this demonstration, because this is an advanced account, all features and functions will be accessible. Before we go through the software, I would like to point out that there is a help icon at the bottom of each tab. Click on this at any time to display the tray table which contains detailed information about each data field and button. For a simplified workflow, I will work on each of the five tabs from left to right, top to bottom. The first tab is the project tab, where all the project location data is entered and can be saved for users that have an advanced account. The next tab is the drawing tab. In this area, users are able to enter the location address and map out the project area. The third tab is the Racking tab, where mounting systems and modules can be defined. The fourth tab is the Parameter tab, where layout criteria is defined. The final tab is the Communication tab, where the email summary is generated and mailed out for users with an advanced account. To start a new project, go to the Projects tab and fill in the necessary information for each field. Once you have entered in the client data, click the Save button. Information can be saved to autofill for the next project. Now if I click on the New button and select New Project, the client data information will already be populated for me. I can then rename this project and save it again so that I don't have to re-enter all the information. Filling in the project data information is for the user's benefit, especially for those that opt to generate an email summary at the end of a completed project. The next tab over is the Drawing tab. In the Drawing tab, the project area is defined. Enter an address into the search field to go to the location of the project. Then click Search. Notice that the current zoom scale will be used for the display of the searched address. If I zoom further in, and click to search, that's the extent of what I'll see when I get my displayed results. If I zoom further out and click search again, I'll stay to that same zoom scale. Now I'll zoom back in and research my address for the project location. Currently the software is not placing a flag in the address location. This will change, but it's important to note that when you enter an address, just zoom in and Google Maps will center the location in the window. By default, Google Maps will switch to a 45 degree perspective when zooming in really close. To change back to a bird's eye view, hover over the satellite icon and deselect the 45 degree option. Users can add, delete, and cancel project areas by using the top row of buttons. I'm going to move over to the west of the building to the open field to define the area that I want to place my racks in. Once I'm in the correct position, I'm going to lock it in place by clicking the pin icon to prevent accidental scrolling. Now I can't move out of this position. Next I'm going to define the layout area by clicking the set flag icon. I'll pick the first position point 
and I can continue to create the boundary by clicking inside the map. To close the boundary, click on the first flag placed. Adjustments can be made to the boundary by using the top row of buttons. Flags can be added, deleted, or moved into a new position by dragging them. To remove all the flags, you can delete the area by selecting the Delete Area button. For additional accuracy, you can also measure the distance between two flags. I'm going to define a new boundary so that we can save and move on to the next tab. The next tab is used for defining the rack and module data. First, name the rack. I'll use letters FS ground mounted system with two modules in portrait by 10 modules long. Then select the number of rows, two, and the number of columns, 10. I'll select the portrait orientation and then move down to select a module. You can choose the module from the database that's provided or create your own. For this demo, I'll create a new module. Then type in the length, the width, and the power. I'll do a 280 watt module. Now I will save the rack of the module and move on to the placement tab. In the placement tab, users can define field offset, module tilt, and row distance. It is important to keep in mind that this is an estimation tool only and does not account for thermal expansion, inverter pads, or areas for roads. For larger breaks between arrays, it is recommended to create a separate project area. I will use a field offset of 15 feet, a tilt angle of 30 degrees, and a reference date of December 21st. Once the reference date is selected, the row distance will automatically be calculated. You can, however, use your own row distance if that is preferred. Next, I will click the Fill Area button. When this is clicked, all the data previously entered will populate in the project area. As you can see, the rows are populated and the layout information is provided below. I now have a preliminary rack count, peak power estimation, and module count. One of the greatest benefits to the PV Groundbreaker tool is the ability to make quick and easy changes. If I want to make a change to the boundary, racking, or module, all I need to do is go back to that tab, update the data, and repopulate the area. I'll make adjustments to the boundary by dragging the flags into a new position. I'll select a new module. And then repopulate the field. The new results will be displayed below. Now that my project is complete, I can move on to the Communications tab for an email summary. I can add additional information about the project, however this is not included in any of the calculations. Any additional project data that's entered will be included in the email summary. I can then click the Email Summary at Schletter button, and an email with the project data will be sent to the email address provided in the account. I can also choose to click the Show Project Summary to see the immediate results. This information can then be printed out and saved. This concludes the PV Groundbreaker tutorial. Thank you for joining and we hope to hear from you soon. Please feel free to contact us at the email or phone number on the screen or visit us at www.schletter.us.